Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. So today we are going to proceed with our next topic which is how to transform your step sequence into a ladder logic diagram. To recall, this is uh, the things that you need to know uh, in a step sequence. So the step uh, will be activated one by one. So it cannot be activated uh, two or three steps at one time. And then uh, um, the steps will be set only after the conditions to that particular step are met. And then the previous step in the previous, uh, the, the previous process in the previous steps already being set up. And then once the step is set in that particular step, the previous step will be reset. Each step produces outputs. And then when the step is set, the output will give out signal 1. And then the output commands is depending on the reset and set status of that output within that particular set. And then uh, the conditions of a step, it could be a process or time dependent by using timer, for example. Or it can be both. This is the basic structure of a step sequence. We have a step here. And then each step has its own reset button. And then each step has its input commands that will govern this step to be activated. And then uh, each step has its own output that is going to be set or reset during that step. Okay, for example, in this step one, hash one is off, which is the output commands or reset. Okay, off or reset. The push button S1 is pressed to start the operation. So to start the step 1, the push button S1 is pressed. So this is the basic structure of a step sequence. So you have to remember you must have an input commands, output commands, and then the step itself. And then each step has its own reset button, which when you are arriving at step 2, so it will in parallel reset. The step one. So we go to the example of a drilling machine by using the step sequence. So from this step sequence, you are going to transform it into a lady logic diagram. So figure one shows an illustrative representation of a drilling machine, uh, which is controlled by the PLC. And then the drill at its initial condition is at S1. So when uh, a momentary no start button is push, spindle is turned on, and at the same time, drill move forward at high speed. So meaning that the brake is deactivated. So when S2 is activated, so meaning that when the drill is moved from S1 to S2, the movement of the drill will be slow. So meaning that at this particular time, or at this particular step, the brake is activated. And then at this step, the coolant uh, pump is turned on. So when the drill is arrived at step 3 or at this limit uh, switch of S3, the drill will be in a reverse motion, okay, with high speed. And then at this step, the brake is deactivated again. So when the drill reach uh, its initial condition, which is, which is S1, the coolant pump are turned off, oh, okay. So the process will be delayed for about one minute. So meaning that you are going to need a timer to produce this one minute delay. When a momentary normally closed stop button is used, then it will stop the overall process. So from this example, uh, you can translate it into the step sequence. Uh, this is how we translate it. Okay, you have an initial condition, which is your step zero actually here. Okay, step zero. So at initial condition, uh, the input here is S1 and then stop is in a normally open condition. Okay, because when you uh, put the stop button in normally closed condition, so meaning that it will stop the overall, oppress, uh, the overall operation. But right now we are going to start the process and therefore we put the stop button in a normally open condition. This is step zero. Eh? So from step zero here, it will move to step one. So at step one, the spindle is turned on. So you set the spindle at the output conditions. And then the motor forward is 
inside. And then the memory five here is actually coming from this step five because after you have, after the process is done, so it will coming back to step one. Okay. And then once you have put all these conditions and then when the drill is moved to S2, so when S2 is activated here, it will move to step two. Okay, so the input to the step two is M1 and S2. Okay, while in step one, the input is uh, M0 here. Oh, okay, and then uh, start button also with M5, which is this memory. Okay, and then uh, at, uh, at step two, you will activate the brake and then you will activate the coolant pump. Because uh, right now, the spindle uh, motion is will be a little bit slow. You will slow down the motor and therefore you need to activate the brake. Okay, and then you set the brake at step two. And then when the machine is arriving at step two, Three, which is arriving at the lower limit switch S3. So it will reset the motor forward. Okay, and then it will set the motor reverse. And it will reset brake. Okay, because it is going to move up uh, with a high velocity. Or with high speed. Okay, and then uh, in step 4, when uh, the drill is coming back to its initial condition, so you will stop the spindle, so you reset the spindle, and then you stop the coolant pump, and then you stop the reverse motor. Okay, and then you start timer 1, because you're going to have a uh, one delay timer. Okay, and then after that, you have to reset uh, the overall uh, step. I mean, you need, you need to come back to step 1, so you, you have to add another one more memory here, which will reset the step, this overall step come back to step one again. So after that, we are going to move this step sequence to a ladder logic diagram by using a reset or set function. So in order for you to use this uh, RS function, uh, you need to understand there are two networks uh, that is uh, available for this transformation. The first one is a step sequence network, which consists of the memories and the steps and then the second one is the output network which consists of all the output conditions for each step so we start with the first uh, which is the step sequence network this is step zero at step zero uh, this is the initial condition of the process so uh, you have to translate this one by using the rs component here so you have to look into the input here so the input is s1 Okay, and then stop button here, which is in a normally open condition. And then it has a reset here, which will be reset by memory 1. Okay, and then uh, M30 is actually where you put your stop button. Okay. So you just put in any memory for that stop button. All right. So, uh, you have to look here. So, S1 is going to activate uh, this step, S1 and stop. So, S1 and stop will be uh, set uh, this step 0. And then this step 0, uh, you will rename it as M0.0, .0, which uh, showing you that uh, this is the step 0 for this process. Okay, and then this step will be reset by the stop button. Okay. Uh, the stop button or the stop memory here with uh, M01, okay, this one, the reset from M01. Okay, then we move to the second step. In the second step, you can see here, there are a few pins to, uh, to activate this step. The first one is the input from M0. And then uh, the input from start button and M5. So here, M0 which is actually coming from here. Okay, and then this is M0. And then the start button here. And then uh, with M05 here. So it will set this step 1. Okay, to reset this step 1 is by using 
the step to memory here and then this is a stop button yes yeah, stop memory for step two the similar uh, things you are going to implement we have to look into the input so there are memory one 0 0.1 and then this s2 input here okay and then you rename this step as a, uh, m0.2 and then it will be reset by step 3 and this is one uh, memory stop stop memory okay and so on for step 3 the input here is m2 and s3 Okay, and then the reset here is, uh, this is a stop memory button, okay. And then from step 4, step 4 we reset step 3. Well, in step 4, so the input is from M3. Okay, and then S1 here. And then um, M30 is a stop memory and then M0.5, okay. And then uh, you rename this step as a M0.4, which uh, tells you or denoted as step 4. And similar to step 5. Okay, but in step 5, before you can restart the operation, you need to give a delay here. Okay, so you need to, uh, so this step is activated by a delay and M0.4. Okay, and then... It will set, sorry, this is wrong. Okay, and then it will reset by M uh, 0 0.1. Okay, because the next step is 0 0.1. So therefore, it will be reset by M 0 0.1. Okay, so that is how you translate the step sequence uh, by using a memory. Okay, you just translate by using uh, the input conditions okay so the input conditions can come from the sensors and as well as the memory step okay so you have to input here the first one is for set and the second one is for reset and then after you have uh, done this step sequence network only then you can uh, move to the output networks so the output network will hold all the output conditions of that step. So for example, we have uh, five outputs here. We have spindle, motor forward, motor reverse, and then we have a coolant pump and brake. Okay, and therefore we have five. Okay, spindle, this one. So we have five output here. So we start with the spindle. So for spindle, okay, so at this network, you name this network as a spindle. So to set spindle, is at M1. Therefore, the M1 or the step, the memory for step 1 will activate uh, spindle. Okay, to turn off the spindle, it will be reset uh, by this M4. Okay, and then this is uh, M30 is the universal stop button here. And then for forward motor, it is set by M1 here. Okay, so you rename this uh, output condition as a forward motor. And then it will be reset by M3. Therefore, you have an M0.3 here. For motor reverse, set by M3. Okay. And then it will be deactivated by M4. For brake, so the brake will be activated by step 2, M2, and then it will be deactivated uh, by step 3. Okay, this is for brake. For coolant, it will be set at step 2, and then it will be reset by step 4. Okay. And then for timer, it will be set by M4. Okay, this is for delay, which will be set by M4. And after the delay is completed or done, 
it will move to step five immediately move to step five okay so uh, step five uh, we're coming back to step one again so the stop button here which is a normally closed momentary uh, switch okay it will uh, turn on the m30 okay that's why you can see from your previous uh, network you can see the m30 is being fit is being fit to uh, the reset port of every step and or networks all right so that's all for the step sequence transformation into a ladder logic diagram by using the reset and set function okay so you have to remember you need to understand there are two networks that is uh, that are associated in this transformation the first one is the uh, network for the step sequence itself okay the movement of the step from its initial condition towards the end of the steps and then the second network is the output network which is uh, translate all the output conditions for that particular output or actuator all right so till then i will see you again in the next chapter